So gravity is the universe breathing in and light is the universe breathing out or the forces breathing out. Light flows outwards always at the maximum speed possible and gravity pulls in at the maximum speed possible. Light uh, has no mass and flies outward. Gravity has the most mass possible and pulls inward. In the flickbook example, you have uh, a particle such as a photon traveling in a single direction towards an observer who is another point on the page of the flickbook. And it travels pixel by pixel, always at the same speed, pixel by pixel by pixel. And when you stack all of those flickbook images on top of each other, you will see that what you really have is a line from um, the observer, the source of the light, and then as you go down through the flick book, they get closer and closer and closer until the light source has touched the observer. But when you actually look at the flick book, take away the pages and just look at the ink, you will see that you have a diagonal line representing the photons travel towards the observer. And all you really have is a geometrical shaped triangle. The uh, triangle having the distance between the observer and the photon as one side the uh, observer remaining static, traveling downward through the flick book as another side of the triangle, and then the final side of the triangle, the photon, as it travels towards the observer through the passage of time. And time, of course, merely becomes a uh, distance in the flick book when you look at it, when you look at the ink taken from the flick book without the flick book pages, just becomes distance and actually finally becomes just geometry, just a geometrical relationship. And as the light travels towards the observer, it's uh, and there's another bit I've got to try and remember. <laughs> the universe breathing in and the universe breathing out. Yes, the other th point about the light traveling towards the observer uh, that proves this uh, is that uh, you would say, well, how does the observer know that the light is traveling towards him if it only arrives at the last minute? How are they going to know where it comes from? Well, they wouldn't. They would have no idea where it comes from, but for the fact that there is more than one photon coming. So uh, they get photon after photon after photon. And of course, uh, that diagonal line isn't just a line, diagonal line really towards that one observer, but of course the light, the photon is making a ripple in the page of the flick book, an expanding circle of effects on every pixel, um, which would manifest itself as a cone uh, in the transparent uh, flick book. When that cone intersects with the vertical line of the observer, um, the observer would detect that a photon has arrived in the from the direction in which the observer is looking. They would be hit by the photon. If they were looking in a different direction, they would not be hit by the photon, but only because their body blocks it. If uh, your body was completely transparent and your eye uh, was transparent, you would never be able to know what direction light was coming from. So the direction of light is um, um, determined by the blocking of your body, blocking uh, all other lights uh, and having a partial view. Um, the the, uh, the photon arrives and we do not really see the speed. We don't really see light travel. We just see the moment it arrives. This means we theor theorize that light has arrived. We don't see it's, we don't see light's journey. We don't see it moving. We can't see light move. Light cannot be seen moving along a trajectory. And this is because it doesn't move along a trajectory. All it does is it is uh, the effect of energy having a knock-on effect, a ripple. It is the ripple that moves, not the light. There is no such thing as light. Light is just the universe breathing out where gravity is the universe breathing in. And so when the light arrives, you only ever see the thing, and it doesn't really exist. 
until it hits you and it arrives, just as a wave doesn't really exist until it hits your surfboard. Before that, it is only a theoretical wave, uh, because you wouldn't even know it was moving anything. So, um, events only actually happen when they have an effect on observers. An event cannot be said to happen at all unless it has an effect on an observer. That's to say that we, uh, we, um, because our science is based on observation, we've painted ourselves into that corner. We can only define an event as an event if it is observed. And that is not necessarily the nature of the universe. That is the nature of our science, which we say we cannot allow that an event happens unless it is observed or unless sufficient observation is put together um, create a logical conclusion that something is happening somewhere else to a theoretical observer but it is still based on observation at that point we are still basically saying uh, nothing's real unless it is seen or seeable that is the limitation of how we have decided to make science this observational based idea of what reality is but if you um, go with the sponge theory, the idea that the, uh, the universe is a giant sponge of space-time and that we are just events disrupting the real matter of space-time, then you would realise that we're so we can't observe space-time um, on its own terms. And therefore our um, science, based on this concept of observation, observational reality, observational proof fails to be able to detect um, in a way that makes sense to us space-time because again detecting, detecting is observing. We uh, in order to understand space-time would have to um, come up with a concept of uh, science that is not based upon detection and then we would have to really strip science back down towards philosophy ontology and philosophy because um, observation is not enough if you are trapped <laughs> um, if you are trapped in a dark room and to be able to see things is the only method that you have chosen to use to uh, describe uh, your reality you are not going to be able to describe it at all you're going to be silent but you're still going to walk around the room bumping into things and that's exactly what we're doing 